It is by no means a matter of chance that Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg is getting far less international coverage than it should. Even media of South Asian countries have not given much coverage of this summit, as it deserves, because U.S. and collective West maintain stranglehold over these countries through the Anglophonic South Asians that happens to be the ruling class and lo <clears throat> loyal to their colonial masters. Until the people of former colonial countries strip themselves of their colonial conditioning through indigenous schooling and education, transformation of societies will remain wishful thinking. Africa and whole of South Asia must go through transformative processes, process aimed at dismantling the colonial legacies and Eurocentric dominance in educational system and cultural representations. Decolonization seeks to promote inclusive inclusivity, diversity, and the recognition of indigenous knowledge and marginalized perspectives. By challenging Western-centric curricula and promoting local histories, language, and traditions, Decolonization strives to empower communities, foster cultural pride, and rectify historical injustices. This movement encourages critical thinking, questioning established norms, and embracing the plurality of human experiences. Ultimately, decolonizing education and culture aims to create a more equitable and enriched world that respects and celebrates the unique contributions of all peoples. Decolonizing education and culture must be the goal of all poor and underdeveloped countries of the global south, for which they must wage and win tough struggle and prepare themselves to confront USA and collective West in this process. Both China and Russia have passed through this phase and won. Their victory in that struggle has brought them where they are today. In this context, it is noteworthy that history was removed from the Nigerian school curriculum in 2009 under the pretext that students avoided the subject, graduates did not have job prospects, and teachers were scarce, etc. But Nigerian public were not happy with such decision. The 13 years without the subject being taught have created big vacuum. Truth is that a political system was installed to degenerate, to degrade the quality of human resource, the engine of all socio socioeconomic progress, and keep the population soaked in slavish mentality so that subjugated masses may never become conscious of their true potential and no indigenous resistance may evolve from its soil. This explains why, in the contemporary world, history of civilization refers to China, Arab, Arab world, South Asia, Latin America, etc. But hardly anything is said about the great ancient medieval civilizations of African continent. Here is a review of great African past. Africa is sometimes nicknamed the mother continent as it is the oldest inhabited continent on earth. The kingdom of Aksum or Aksum is the oldest of the African kingdoms. This kingdom spread across what is today Ethiopia and Eritrea in an area where evidence of farming dates back to 10,000 years. In nearly all African countries today, the language used in government and media is the one imposed by a recent colonial power. Though most people speak their native African languages, delinked from means of livelihood, pattern is same in South Asian countries. A ruling class consisting of minority indigenous people wearing masks of democracy, freedom, and human rights are taking care of the interest of former colonial masters and stripping off indigenous population of their language, literature, history, tradition, culture, and replacing them with imitation Western lifestyle, resulting in massive degradation in the quality of indigenous human resources. Following are a quick rundown on African history 
which remains well concealed from Africa's Western school curricula, that has infiltrated into African schooling, imposed under the pretext of development and prosperity. Though in reality, this schooling is a well thought out design to cripple human creativity, thus degrade the quality of human resource. Here is a map of three West African empires, Ghana, Mali, and Songhai. Empire of Ghana or Mogadu, which is Mauritania, Senegal, and Mali, 7th to 13th century. Empire of Mali, near the upper Niger River, 13th to 17th century. Empire of Songhai, close to modern Niger, 15th to 16th century. Ghana, Mali, and Songhai, the three great empires of West Africa prospered through unimaginable wealth, controlled more gold, and conducted more global trade than any European power at this time in history. Promoting and preserving African languages, cultures, and tradition is crucial for ensuring national prosperity across the continent. By embracing their own heritage, Africans can foster a strong sense of identity and unity, paving the way for social cohesion and development. Language serves as a powerful tool for communication, and promoting indigenous languages can foster inclusivity and participation in various sectors of society. This can lead to increased educational attainment, higher levels of innovation, and enhanced social mobility, all of which are essential for sustainable development. Furthermore, African cultures and traditions are rich in history, knowledge, and values. Embracing and preserving these traditions can provide a sense of continuity and pride, which strengthens local bonds and contributes to a stable and harmonious society. Moreover, by valuing their own cultural assets, Africans can harness the power of cultural tourism, attracting international visitors and generating economic growth. This approach can empower local communities and provide new economic opportunities. While embracing African languages, culture, and tradition is vital, it does not mean isolating from the rest of the world. Instead, it encourages intercultural dialogue, allowing Africans to learn from other nations while preserving their uniqueness. In conclusion, Africa's national prosperity can be safeguarded and enhanced by valuing and promoting its own languages, cultures, and traditions. Embracing their heritage will lead to greater social harmony, economic growth, and a brighter future for the continent and its people. Make no mistake, Africa flirting with USA and Collective West has not delivered the goods over the last seven post-war decades. Collaboration with China and Russia is producing results. But the fundamental issue for any nation, as it is for an individual, the time-tested dictum, it's a crime to be weak. The teaching of an Indian saint who taught, you are a lion cub, why do you wrap yourself in sheep's skin and behave like one? Wake up and discover your own strength from your own abducted history. Political dynamics taking shape in West Africa is posing the question, is the contemporary world witnessing the resurgence of energy and dynamism of the kingdom of Aksum in the cradle of mother continent Africa? Global South is watching and waiting. If you like what you see and hear, please subscribe and ring the bell.